Oh, hey there, beauty babies! It's long overdue I talk about the most important thing on the GameCube. And that's one of two things. It's either Nintendo Puzzle Collection, or whatever the hell's on the bottom of this. This is like a weapon. There are generally easier ways to play GameCube games in 2022 than on an actual GameCube, whether it's through the Wii, which has a huge variety of cheap component cables and flawless backwards compatibility considering it pretty much is a GameCube. Or you could use a homebrewed Wii U, which is also pretty much a GameCube considering it's also pretty much a Wii. It can natively play GameCube games, Nintendo just never allowed it to. It can't read mini discs, but it can load digital games just fine. However, what keeps a lot of enthusiasts using original hardware and spending a lot on video quality isn't the GameCube itself. It's this little thing that makes it a technical cube because it wasn't before. The Game Boy Player. Game Boy Player is an evolution of the Super Game Boy from Super Nintendo. There's actual Game Boy hardware crammed into both of these things, although the Super Game Boy never evolved past the original black and white Game Boy, whereas the Game Boy Player is a Game Boy Advance and can do anything a normal Game Boy Advance can do. Game Boy games, Game Boy Color games, Game Boy Advance games, multiplayer with a link cable. You can even hook up an actual Game Boy Advance to use as a controller for the most authentic and, in my opinion, comfortable experience. It's an official home console GBA, and that is rad as flip! But then Nintendo said that is too rad as flip and made this. The Game Boy Player disc is meant to just tell the GameCube to boot into the Game Boy Player and become a Game Boy Advance, but they couldn't just leave it at that. See, if we compare the Super Game Boy to the Game Boy Player, there's clearly something not right here. Super Game Boy's got this crystal clear image quality, but Game Boy Player is dark and blurry. There's a few reasons for this, but one is there's no way to play these games in their original resolution despite this being a Game Boy Advance. The GameCube is forcing them into either 480i or 480p, but they're really intended for 240p. But inaccurate scaling is far from the worst of its problems. They do give you some image quality settings such as a soft, normal, and sharp filter, but even the sharpest setting gives you an incredibly dull picture. They've overlapped everything with a dark filter, very similar to that of the Wii U Virtual Console. But the actual image has a blur filter applied no matter what setting you're using, and if you go to the full screen mode, which is meant to just sort of fill the display, there's an even blurrier filter applied, and you can see it apply in real time, like, what, what, what happened to the visuals? It's very odd. And perhaps worst, the disc doesn't really allow the Game Boy Player to run correctly. The GameCube ends up outputting a different refresh rate to the Game Boy Advance, making games feel like they're stuttering the entire time. And perhaps the worst outcome from all of this? Input lag. If you felt the Game Boy Player isn't very responsive, that is because it is not very responsive. But it's not the hardware's fault, it's this disc. And somehow, despite all these problems, the Game Boy Player disc is worth more than the Game Boy Player itself. Like we're talking around £50 for the unit, and then £100 for the disc. Even though it does nothing but bad things to the hardware. So, let's fix all these problems. This is Game Boy Interface, a homebrew replacement to the Game Boy Player disc. It's still using the native Game Boy Player hardware to deliver the most accurate Game Boy experience possible, but the difference between this and Nintendo's official software isn't even comparable. Game Boy Interface is brighter, clearer, cleaner, and incredibly responsive. But John, how do I get one of these? Settle down! All you need is one of these. An SD2, SP2. The underside of your GameCube has a few ports. The Game Boy Player uses one of them, the GameCube Broadband Adapter uses another, and nothing uses this one. So this little chip that goes for £2, £3, a very small amount, can occupy the most lonely slot on the GameCube and give your system a micro SD card reader. Once you've got one of these in your cube, all you need is Swiss, the GameCube's homebrew launcher. If you've got Swiss already, awesome. And if you don't, here is the cheapest and easiest solution, the save exploit method. The gist is there's a number of games out there that people have created hacked save files for. I went for Mario Sunshine, and when the game boots, it reads my hack save file, and instead of continuing into the game, it boots Homebrew. Really easy to do. So how do we get a hack save file? Well, there's two things you can do. One is free if you've got a Wii, and the other method is not free, but it's still very easy. So you can just buy a hacked memory card on eBay. That's the very easy solution. Some even sell the SD to SP2 adapter with a hacked memory card. But the other solution is a Wii with Homebrew. So let's quickly talk through this. You'll need the GCMM app, the GameCube Memory Card Manager. 
Put this in the apps folder on your Wii's SD card. You'll also need to make a folder on the SD card's root called MC Backup. This is where we're going to put the hack save file. GCHomebrew.com has a bunch of game saves for you to download, but be wary that saves are region dependent. And because I'm European, and because the game boots through the memory card really fast, I went for PAL Mario Sunshine, which I found here on the GitHub. And again, there's a link to the specific game in the description. Now we just need one more thing to throw onto this SD card before we continue, and that is the actual Swiss homebrew itself. Head to the Swiss link in the description and download the latest version. In the zip, we only need boot.gci, which is right here in the GCI folder. Put that in MC Backup alongside your hack save file for Mario Sunshine or whatever game you're choosing. Cool! Now from your Wii, make sure your memory card is in the GameCube memory card slot and go to the Homebrew browser. Boot up GCMM, launch from the SD card, and press Backup. This lets us move saves from the SD card to the GameCube memory card. We're going to move both of these, both the game save exploit and Swiss, and expect Swiss to take a bit longer because it is much more beefy than a regular save file. And now your GameCube is hacked! If I put my memory card back into the GameCube and boot up Mario Sunshine, the hacked save file will be read and the game will then load Swiss off the memory card. And now we're in GameCube Homebrew! Swiss can detect the SD to SB2, so anything you put on a micro SD card that's compatible with the GameCube will show up now on Swiss, whether it's game backups, emulators, or whatever. But we want Game Boy Interface. So one last time, let's get some files on an SD card. This time the micro SD card and not your Wii's SD card. We've got a link to Game Boy Interface in the description, so all you need to do is download this file right here, head to the apps folder in the zip, and you'll see three different versions of Game Boy Interface. You only need one of these, but I suggest installing all of them because there are weaknesses and pros to each one. So go into each folder and grab the .doll, so gbi.doll, gbihf.doll, and gbisr.doll. Ignore everything else, I know there's a bunch more files, you do not need them, ignore them. And god I know, they're tiny, right? Like 270 kilobytes for an app? That doesn't seem right, but it is, don't worry. Now that your micro SD card is ready to go in your GameCube, we're ready to use Game Boy Interface. But before we boot anything up, Swiss is actually capable of launching any GameCube game in either 240p or 480p. Yeah, you can force anything, forcing progressive scan on even PAL games. But we can use this to force the Game Boy Player Disc to be 240p. And that does fix a lot of its scaling problems. This looks way better than the official method. But we've come too far to worry about this disc anymore. Let's get serious. Throw the disc away. I know it's worth a lot of money. You don't need it. Throw it away. I would highly recommend using the HF version, High Fidelity. It is the most basic in terms of features, giving you no customization and booting like a normal Game Boy Advance would, but the results are outstanding. It boots in 240p without being forced, overlays zero filters, and has incredible input latency. Check this out compared to the Game Boy Player disc. Heck, check the image quality out. This is an unbelievable difference. It's so much brighter, and all the pixels that got lost on the Game Boy Player disc? They're back! We found them! But with High Fidelity's lack of features, you must rely on your display or scaler to zoom in the image, otherwise you're left with big black borders. The standard version certainly has its benefits, the key being the ability to scale the image in software by pressing the X button and then shifting the shoulder buttons. Image quality is still great, I'm not sure it's quite the level of high fidelity but it does look pretty good, but I do notice some ghosting present in high speed games. The final version is for speedrunners, giving you the most basic image and the lowest latency possible. It's not as sharp as high fidelity, but it is still really good. So my preference is pretty clear, but no matter what, every version is highly superior to Nintendo's own software. Heck, this goes above Super Game Boy as well. All Western Super Game Boys ran inaccurately, with a clock speed above the actual hardware, meaning games ran just a little bit too fast. This was fixed in the Super Game Boy 2, sold exclusively in Japan, but even then, it's just limited to the original Game Boy. No Game Boy Color, and especially no Game Boy Advance. Sure, some games got specialized Super Game Boy features, like borders, and in the case of DK94, some improved sound, which may have you sticking with the Super Game Boy in some cases, but the vast majority are way better on Game Boy Interface. We can play any Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and regular Game Boy, just like a GBA, and it looks so good! And of course, just like a Game Boy Advance, it will inject color into a black and white Game Boy game as well. Some of them do look pretty good like this, but I've always found a few, like Kirby's Dreamland, to be just too much on the eyes. So, little tip, and this works for any colored Game Boy, whether it's Game Boy Color or Game Boy Advance. 
Hold left and B on the Game Boy splash screen, and the game will boot in black and white. There's a bunch of different colors you can force, but this is of course the most natural for Game Boy games. And hey, because the Game Boy Player even has link cable compatibility, we can use our GameCube as a Game Boy to play games like Four Swords Adventures. So I've got Four Swords running here on the Wii, which has three Game Boy Advances plugged in and one Game Boy Player GameCube. You keeping up? And if we just change the video source and my scaler from the Wii to the GameCube, we've got a full screen Game Boy Advance display from the GameCube Game Boy. Get it? So what I'm saying is an 8 TV setup is the ideal way to play Four Swords Adventures. God, it's hard to get over just how sharp the image quality is. It's way above anything Nintendo's distributed themselves. Obviously above the Game Boy Player disc, but also way above Wii U, and the Game Boy Advance emulator they used for 3DS, even though that was just for the ambassadors, but still, better than that. I mean, of course it is. This is an emulation. It is an actual Game Boy. It's flawless. And just like actual hardware, you can stretch Game Boy games in an unholy way. I hate this. No. Some games had enhancements via the Game Boy Player, usually transferring rumble from the cartridge to the GameCube controller itself, and some games made the gamma more natural. In fact, there were a few games with no rumble at all on the cartridge that had it on Game Boy Player, like Mario Advance 4 and Mario and Luigi. All of this, perfectly functional in Game Boy interface. Every game treats it just like the official Game Boy Player, and it even refused to play Game Boy Advance video cartridges just like the real thing. I'm sorry, fairly odd parents. I can only watch you on this screen. Given this is all running on actual hardware and doing very little with the software side, this means Game Boy Interface doesn't boot ripped ROMs and demands actual cartridges. You could of course use an EverDrive cartridge if you want to, but don't go in expecting emulator options like using actual ROMs. This isn't for that. This is just raw, unfiltered, untouched Game Boy clarity, and it's absolutely beautiful. You don't need that £100 disc, put it in the bin! Game Boy Advance was only on the market for three years until the DS came along, but its library is still so pure. Sure, there's a lot of ports, but not only are many of them really interesting, but of course it's packed with its own games made specifically for GBA, and the backwards compatibility with a decade of regular Game Boy is unbeatable. The original Game Boy Player disc didn't do this legendary machine any justice, and with Interface, we can truly appreciate how good the Game Boy Player actually is. This is how Game Boy games can look, and how they're meant to look. I've been on a bit of a mission lately, making my footage look as good as it can do on native authentic hardware. And this thing here, the Game Boy Player, has always been a hurdle to that. How can you make something look good when it's so dull and washed out? But thanks to Game Boy Interface, I can finally play Game Boy games in all their clarity on authentic original hardware. GBI is just incredible, and it's something I wish I'd been using for years now. But unfortunately, my memories are tampered by this little thing here. But no longer! GBI is here to stay, and I hope some of you guys check it out too, because it's really, really awesome. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Holy moly, you telling me you watched the entire video? Thank you so much to you, I appreciate all the support, and thank you to our lovely patrons for making this video even possible. My next video is on Sonic Forces, I'm looking back at that game before Frontiers comes out, so look forward to that, and thank you once again. We'll see you next time everyone, bye!